Happy New Year! I know everyone's buzzing about 2017, new year, new chapter, but I'm gonna have to stop you there because we still have things to tend to. I am gonna shout out some of my favorites from December, so let's take a step back and get on with the program. First up on the agenda, I have my go-to airport outfit. In December, I traveled a ton and I pretty much wore the exact same outfit to the airport every single time. And that included this Adidas track jacket. I am just obsessed with this whimsical triangle print. And then it has the classic Adidas stripes on the shoulders. And then on the sleeves, there's a sick Japanese writing. I have no idea what this says. I'm assuming it says something about Adidas, but who knows? If any of you Japanese subscribers would like to translate this, please do and write it in the comments down below. Anyway, it has this brilliant red lining inside and it's just a really breathable, comfortable material and perfect for airport travel. Um, underneath, I would just wear some leggings, but for my shoes, I would always, always wear my Adidas boosts. And guys, these are so effing comfortable. These are actually my workout shoes, but I decided to start wearing them to the airport and it's just changed the game for me. I feel like when I'm wearing these, I have a physical spring back in my step and I think it's because of the sole. I don't know what kind of technology or science they use, but I feel like it does give a physical spring and bounce to my step and it just makes the whole airport process a lot easier. Um, and by the way, this is not sponsored by Adidas at all. I just feel like when I'm wearing athleisure outfits like this, I like to align all the brands. For this case, it's all Adidas. If I was wearing Nike, it would all be Nike. But I don't know. I feel like this is a fashion faux pas that's been drilled into my head to not mix like athletic brands, but I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, now that we have the airport outfit down, I wanna talk about the luggage that I've been using. For years, I've been using my big two squishy bags, my big purple squishy bag named Barney, and then my gray squishy bag. That one didn't have a name, but those were my ride or dies. I used the crap out of them, and unfortunately, my purple squishy kept on getting lost. I don't know why. I mean, it would always return to me, but it would be a couple days, and just the anxiety of having my belongings just like, out somewhere just kind of freaked me out and so I think it has to do with the squishy case and maybe the people at the airport just didn't care for it and just kind of forgot about it so I thought it was time for an upgrade and I finally got my hands on some Calpac luggage this is the brand that does that sick marble case luggage but instead I decided to go with the champagne set because it's the closest thing to rose gold and I'm having a heavy rose gold moment right now um, from my phone to my ring it's just it's just my type of style I love the ridges it has and 360 wheels. The wheels are super important because there's nothing worse than traveling with a luggage that has shitty wheels. It's the worst because you're just literally dragging all your stuff and just heaving at the airport. It's not fun. So these have great roll, great traction. And when you open it, it has two sections. You have one compartment for all your clothes and you can zip that up. And then the other part for just whatever else belongings you have. And then you just sandwich it together. The same thing goes with the carry-on. I just love having nice compartments because it keeps you organized and you just feel more secure when you're traveling. The whole travel process can be so exhausting. So it's so important to have everything in its right place. So far with this luggage, I've traveled to Dubai and Hawaii. And on my big suitcase, there's a little bit of dings here and there, but honestly, I, I don't really mind because it's made for wear and tear. And I mean, it's just the way the airport handles things. I am planning on filming a how I pack my suitcase slash luggage video um, in February. It's been on my to film list for like years at this point. So I'm gonna finally try and crack down and film it in February. Uh, and you guys can keep me accountable for that. For my beauty favorite, I have Tarte's Shape Tape Concealer. And man, I am pretty late on the game with this one. It's already been blasted all over the YouTube beauty blogosphere. But hey, at least I'm finally on the train now. So what I like to do with this is before foundation, I will dot it all underneath my eyes. And then with a damp beauty blender, I'll just blend that baby in. At first, it can go on a little pasty, but you just have to work it in and then it'll start blending seamlessly. Uh, this is definitely more of a brightening tool as opposed to like a spot concealer type. This just targets the dark areas on your skin and just really highlights and brightens them. I've noticed that since using this, I look a lot more fresh faced and awake, but maybe not today because I'm pretty sick right now. I don't know if you can tell. I was gonna say this disclaimer at the beginning of the video, but then I didn't want you guys to just notice my sniffly, raspy voice. But yeah, I'm sick right now, so 
<laughs> I'm just gonna move on to the next product. By now, a lot of you guys know that I get into deep phases with certain chokers and necklaces. And a lot of you guys have noticed this little J necklace that I've been wearing nonstop. Every time I wear it, so many of you guys ask me where it's from. It's always in the description box, but I thought I would throw it in a favorites just to just give it its time. It needs to be highlighted. This is from If & Co, and my friend James actually custom made it for me, and I just love every detail that he put in. I love this glimmering gold chain and the little diamonds in the J. It's just perfect, and I couldn't be more happy with it. And if you guys ever need anything custom jewelry made, I highly recommend the guys at If & Co. They're hardworking, genuine people. It's a small, family-run business and I feel proud to support them. Uh, ben and I are actually thinking about getting our wedding rings done there, so I'll let you know if that ever happens. For my book favorite, I have The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, and I have always been intrigued by this book, but when the film came out and it got bad reviews, it kind of deterred me from reading this, but I knew I was traveling and I knew like that my plane journey was like 15 hours long, so I knew that I wanted something fast to read, and oh my god, I slammed through this book. So this book is about a woman named Rachel. She's divorced, she's an alcoholic, and just life is looking pretty grim for her. And every day she goes on the train for her commute and she passes the same neighborhoods and surroundings. And there's just this one couple that she just becomes infatuated with, obsessed with. She thinks that they have this perfect life and she's even giving them like fake names. It's really creepy. Um, and then one day something happens, something bad. I will not tell you what because I do not want to spoil anything. Honestly, it's these moments where I wish I had a book club because then we can really dive in into the book and talk about all the things that happened. Uh, but regardless, this book is definitely a psychological thriller and it makes you think of the concept of the grass being greener on the other side because that's never ever the case. Now that I finished the book, I am kind of intrigued about watching the movie just to see how bad it is. Um, chances are it's going to be out on Netflix later this year. You guys, I finally have a music favorite for you. I know it's been a couple months since I've recommended anything, but it's because I was in a music drought. But luckily, my friend Kristen showed me the light and introduced me to the artist Tomish. This has been the only artist that I've been listening to since December and discovering him. I have got Ben hooked, I got my friends hooked, and now I'm hoping to get you guys hooked. Uh, this is one of those rare artists where I love every single one of his songs. Everything is so good. The first song I heard was called crazy dream I was driving and five seconds in I was like I love this song and I just repeated it over and over and over again and then it snowballed into me listening to his Beat Tapes 2 EP and then the rest of his singles. I'm really horrible at describing music genres but for him I would say it's kind of like upbeat but relaxing. I know those are two opposite but when you hear it you'll know what I mean. This is like the type of music that you put on when your friends are over, when you're studying, when you're driving, when your parents are over, just pretty much anything. It's like inoffensive music pretty much. I don't see how anyone can not like it, but maybe I'm just heavily biased. My favorite, favorite songs to get you guys kind of started is So Close, In the Midst of It All, Nightgowns, and Sunshine? and then Crazy Dream. I don't know, I've got a lot. So I will put my top five in the description box. So please, please listen to it and give your ears a nice treat. Lastly, I have a TV show favorite. It's called Insecure and it's on HBO. And my friend Andy actually recommended it to me and Ben and I just smashed through the whole season. This show doesn't have enough recognition, which is why I thought I should put it in my favorites. Uh, it follows a woman named Issa and she's just really relatable and likable and I would just love to be her friend. And it kind of follows her life in Los Angeles, shows um, her relationships with people and just little slices of her life pretty much. She has a best friend who can't lock down a man and even Issa and her boyfriend are kind of plateauing. And I know it doesn't sound that interesting, but you just have to watch it. There's just something so authentic, relatable, and just nothing seems staged, which I, which I like. Because I feel like a lot of shows that I watch, sometimes the chemistry is off and that's all I can notice. But with this show, I feel like everything just flows and it's about like real topics and I love that. Also, since it takes place in Los Angeles, I always get super excited when I recognize the place. I'm like, oh, I've been there, or oh my gosh, that's near my house. Um, so I get really excited about that. And the soundtrack is popping. I love every artist they use. They use really modern ones and independent ones. And every time something plays, I'm like trying to jot down what song it is. Definitely go check it out. It's only one season, so you can binge watch and catch up. All right, guys, those are all my favorites for now. As usual, please write down your favorites in the comments down below. Right now, I am looking for specific recommendations on books, films, and music. So any of those three, 
pop them down below. And a lot of you guys are asking questions about, ooh, when's the proposal video coming out? And it's probably gonna be out later this month, maybe early February, we'll see. Uh, ben actually secretly filmed the entire thing. And had I known he was filming it, I would have cried a little bit more gently. I don't know. Like, when I was editing my Goodbye 2016 video, I put in a clip from the proposal and I had to mute it because I was just sobbing uncontrollably. Like you have no idea what I was saying. I'm like, ah. like it's it's bad. Um, so, I mean, we'll see how it comes out. I feel like the people outside probably thought I was like getting broken up with or something, but it was just like, it was just a beautiful moment nonetheless. And I'm like excited to share it with you guys. The past few days just have been the best days of my life. Like Ben and I are buzzing about being engaged and a lot of you guys are wondering like when the wedding's gonna be and it's, I mean, like most couples, it's not gonna be for a while because, oh my God, wedding planning, oh God, it's like, it, it's pretty daunting. Like I can barely plan my own birthday party, let alone an entire wedding with two families. I mean, we'll figure it out step by step. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little update. <clears throat> I feel like my voice from the beginning of the video to the end, it's definitely gotten a lot more raspy since the end. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna rest my voice now and I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mwah.